So you've written a new song, Jason, for a new project that is being released. It's a project about creation care. It's called A New Heaven and a New Earth. Tell us about that project in your own words. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the name of the project, and uh, the name of my song that I contributed to it is called Awestruck. The project uh, reached out to me, I must say, 2020 and uh, asked me if I'd be interested in being a part of a project about creation and care. And I thought, you know, well, uh, first of all, I had a yes in my spirit. And uh, I sensed an opportunity to learn some things uh, because the most that I engaged with the idea of uh, being responsible about creation was... Uh, trying to discern which recycle bin the 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 paper plate and the garbage would go into like when I was at the airport you know and they'd always have those little keys with the little image of, of uh, these things going here and my my things were never in the key so I was like I, I don't know what to do you know um so I thought there could be an opportunity for me to learn some things here the conservative Christian, mindset you know of why should we prioritize creation care when uh when there are all these other evils in the world or when people are going to hell and all that kind of thing and i i understand that but i also thought um surely there is a way to think christianly about all that and and i wonder what that would be and so it was mostly curiosity and an opportunity to learn so and what would you say uh so far have been some of the things you have learned one of the things that's interesting about it is uh i use the example that many years ago like 20 years ago i bought a minivan and i bought it because it was this this cool unique color that I hadn't seen before. I thought, I'm gonna get this because it's really unique. And I bought the van and five minutes after I drove off the lot, I saw that color vehicle everywhere, you know? And so, you know how it is like, once something is on your radar, you begin to see it, right? And so my sense was if I got involved in this project, it would just kind of, uh, it would put, this idea on my radar and I would just begin to learn just because I, I, I would have a, a, I'd be tuned to it now, you know. One of the things that I learned is uh, I think I have a better understanding of, uh, of, of the way um, this issue can often be politicized and I think I have a better understanding and clarity on, on, you know, what the weaknesses and the strengths are on both sides of the issue. And that's helpful because it means I'm not as, as likely to be manipulated or, or pulled into wrong ways of thinking about it. You know, so that's been helpful. But another thing too is, is uh, it's helped me to understand how I was reading a book about, about heartbreak and about uh, about how we heal from from um, from trauma, and uh, and how a lot of trauma recovery programs include um, uh, activities where people go out into the beauty of nature and they hike or they climb, and just about how how much how how healing that is for people. First of all, to be surrounded by beauty, just how beauty in uh, you know just in and of itself has a way of, of of bringing healing, and I'm sure you've experienced this too. Like uh, when when I stand before an ocean or in the mountains, and it's so m majestic, and it, it makes me feel small and insignificant. But also, I don't know, like 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 seen. I think I have a sense of being loved. I have a sense of being filled with wonder, you know. So there is something very healing and therapeutic, um, just about being out in the natural beauty. You know, it's good for our health. 
that all means something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. This next yeah. question I'm going to just read because it's a little lengthy one that I have, and then uh, I can re-ask the, the last part of it. So the title, uh, A New Heaven and a New Earth, it gives us insight into what we can expect in eternity. The Christian faith has a reputation of being eternity-minded, but people are often less familiar with how Christians can live out their faith daily, be a positive influence, and be a good mm -hmm. steward of the earth. How would you encourage Christians to bring God's goodness to earth now while anticipating a beauty in eternity? That's a good question. First thing that, that comes to my mind is a quote I love by Oliver Wendell Holmes, where he talks about people who are who can be so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. I remember a time in my life where my my theology or my, my way of thinking about things was that uh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. It's passing away, but I'm headed to heaven, and and that's where my my hope is. And and all of that is like evacuation and abandonment theology, right? Like if we're going to leave this behind, we're evacuating, we're going to abandon it. And that's just not consistent with, with, with uh, the whole of the story that we have in Scripture, which is more about uh, engagement and infiltration and redeeming, you know. Um, so at, at some point, I had to have that shift in my mind that, uh, you know, um, from imagining that after I became a believer that, okay, now I just have to bide my time and mind my P's and Q's before I go to heaven, you know, to something more like, oh no, actually, I think I'm invited to, to bring heaven to earth, on earth as it is in heaven, through me, Lord Jesus, may it be, you know. I have a song, uh, and the lyric says, God put a million, million doors in the world for his love to walk through. One of those doors is you, you know. I actually don't know how the afterlife works. Like, like a lot of that is, is speculation about what that's all going to mean. What I do know is about the time that I have now. And so what is the proper way for me to live now? What's the most life-giving, God-honoring way for me to conduct myself in the here and now, you know? And I think our readers of Shout Out or Lifestyle Magazine really are wanting to better understand how they can do that in their life. I want to ask you, Jason, how do you live out creation care in your life uh, right now, uh, especially since you've been doing this album? That's evolving, and I'm still growing in that. Uh, I think about there's, there's a camp that I have uh, ministered at for, for 27 years, and uh, the director of the camp, his name is S Steve, and his office is kind of situated in the middle of the camp, and he's got windows, you know, so he's always watching and and seeing what's going on. And uh, at lunchtime, he would uh, he would single out campers who um, he saw just randomly pick up a piece of trash and and he would he would honor them with a silver bracelet for you know for for conscientiousness like that so i'm trying to be more like that camper like like i want to just be more and more conscientious in your song you sing beauty pulls me under awakened mm -hmm. by the wonder Share about how God's creation renders us awestruck and inspires us with the tremendous passion God has for us. When I stand before the ocean or in the Rockies or the Grand Canyon or under a starry sky, like if, if I'm paying attention to what's happening inside of me in those moments, those moments of awe, the amazing thing about wonder is that when it grips you, it it fills us up so completely that it pushes everything else out. There isn't anything, there's no space left over in me to be petty, to be jealous, to be hateful. Like it just kind of, it's like this 
instant transformation that gives me a taste of what life could be like if I continue aiming my heart upward at Jesus Christ, you know? Um, so, so that's a piece of it. Uh, what did you ask me again? Yeah, I just was curious uh, what your thoughts are in terms of how God's creation, you know, actually being out in the nature. Yeah. When, when you're seeing the waves and feeling the breeze and the sun shining on you, all of God's creation, how does it render us awestruck? What, you know, what does it actually, what does that awestruck look like? What does it feel like? Yeah, it feels like it, in those moments, it feels like I, it it harmonizes everything inside of me, you know? It's kind of like my spirit is, uh, just kind of takes a breath. It's very centering, you know? I also know that there are times when you don't want to be caught out in nature. Like it's it's wild, it's dangerous. It can kill you if you're not careful. But if, if we have a right relationship with it, um, it can be so life-giving. I remember years ago, I was with somebody who always wanted to go out and have adventures. And I, and I was always like, I prefer adventures of the mind. What a jerk, right? And I would, you know, like, I preferred to read and all that kind of, all that kind of thing. But I would say as I've gotten older, I've come to love hiking more and, and being outside and being in beautiful places. I try to do it more and more. I remember the first time I went to Colorado, I was, um, it's from a dark moment in my history. Uh, my mom was married to an abusive man and I'd always knew that the Lord was, was, was calling me to him but I, I resisted it for a long time. On Christmas Eve, when I was 15 years old, and uh, he stormed out of, out of the house, and he threatened that when he came back, he was, he was going to kill us, is what he said. And, and my mom called her friend, uh, and she came and picked us up and... and uh, whisked us away to Colorado for about six weeks while things calmed down. And uh, that night, I remember while we were waiting for her friend, my mom uh, t told me to go in my room and, and to lock the door and to not open it for anybody and get my bags packed. And then we just hoped that her friend Denise would get to our house before my stepdad returned. As I sat there in my room with a hatchet in my lap, you know, I I prayed, Lord, if you get me through this night, I'll see what I can do about serving you, you know. And Denise got there first, and she drove us to Colorado. And and uh, and that was the beginning of my uh, my relationship with the Lord. So all of that combined with, you know, I lived in the in the flat plains. Of Minnesota, and to find myself in this new, um, this new terrain of my own heart, and all of a sudden in this beauty, the the majesty of, of the mountains in in Aspen, Colorado, and all those places, it was it was all very intoxicating and overwhelming, and 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 uh, it made a big impression on me. So I still love going to Colorado, um, and it 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 it. It rings those bells in me still, you know. I was hiking in the Rockies, high above the valley down below. I do gain some perspective in, in all of that vast beauty that can make me feel small. It also makes all my, all the things that I'm, I'm worried about seem smaller too. And while I, while I feel small and those things diminish and feel small at the same time i feel very seen by god and uh I, I i sense his love you know it's it's a it's a weird paradox right i feel small and insignificant and seen and special all at the same time you say the refrain i'm on my way that's sort of a, re a repeating refrain in your song yeah. awestruck 
uh, it speaks of an active faith. And I'd like for you to just sort of share about how you view faith as being an active part of what we are as compared to just being some spiritual experience. Yeah. Something that we we act out in the world beyond just being something that we just believe. Yeah, you know, uh, a person I enjoy listening to a lot is, uh, is a guy named Jordan Peterson. He talks about if you really want to know what a person believes, look at how they act and what they do more than you listen to what what they say they believe, you know. So, so yeah, that rings true for me, too. With the book, uh, The Purpose Driven Life, what your thoughts are on how creation care, uh, actually being a steward of the earth, allows us to be purpose driven. And what is the purpose that God wants us to fulfill? When I go to a movie, I will usually sit through the credits all the way through because there's just something that feels honoring about that that's that seems like okay you know what all these people worked so hard on that the least i can do is sit here and enjoy the music as their names go by there's something about that that feels more honoring and less consumeristic than okay i got what i want i'm out of here i don't care who worked on it right so my sense is that there there are ways of being in the world that are better or more honoring than others. Is creation care the number one uh, concern that I would prioritize in my life? Uh, I don't think so. Um, but the way we we care for creation actually impacts the poor. And that, to me, seems like the clearest connection to uh, uh a Christian responsibility, you know, that's my lens for how do we navigate these issues like environmentalism and, and climate control and all that kind of stuff. I think uh, it's, 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 it's through the lens of uh, how do we be mindful and care for the poor? How will it impact the poor? Well, I've been speaking today with Jason Gray. He is the uh, musician that has released the new song, Awestruck. I'm gonna say one more thing about the song too. I thought rather than making the song about any of those issues, I thought the best thing I could do was write a song just about the beauty of creation that would hopefully evoke, yeah, it is beautiful. It's worth me being, being curious with the Holy Spirit about what my role might be in protecting its beauty, you know, so.